couple of months ago, I made these renders of these cinder blocks flying together using an attractor. It's a super basic scene, and I think it would be awesome to run over today and see what we can extrapolate composition-wise and how you can just create nice basic renders utilizing some sort of mega scan or some sort of model. It's a really nice introduction to just making your way to a nice render. So this one's definitely for the beginners, but if you are a little more advanced and you feel like you could pull some things from it, especially in the lighting side, then, then stick around or jump to that chapter to see that. But uh, we'll just move forward with this. Fun fact, tutorials like this uh, were how I got into cinema. There was one a long time ago uh, about dropping these glowing balls um, onto, onto a ground, and that was definitely, this was about 10 years ago now, was my entry point into Cinema 4D. So I think it would be a nice love letter to create a very similar tutorial utilizing very similar dynamics all this time later. It's a really, really nice entry to just see how you can create a nice render. So we're going to be using Octane, but you can use whatever render engine you want. I'm not going to do anything that's specific to Octane, even placing lights, even the power of the lights. You can do this in any render engine. So although I'm using Octane, feel free to use any. But without any more rambling, let's jump into this. Uh, feel free to check out my assets on my store and my courses and uh, yeah without further ado let's move forward so just a little quick rundown here of the scene i just recreated it actually um we're just going to create all these all these blocks or whatever model you have and we're going to slam them together here we can even turn off the sphere and uh, it's going to look a little bit like this now i'm not aiming to make this look good in animation at all this is going to be just for stills so i'm not concentrating on that and we're probably going to aim to grab some sort of frame like this and create some renders with it so let's jump into that. So I'm going to create a new scene and I'm just going to open up mega scans here. Now, whatever model you want to use uh, from anywhere, you definitely can. But I think it's really, really great to exercise with mega scans here. And I'm sure a lot of you that have used mega scans in your workflow are probably going to be familiar with these cinder blocks. They're very famous assets. And the two that I did use were just this concrete brick here and this broken one. So what we'll do is we will change our render uh, renderer into Octane, and then in Megascans, we will just bring these two over. So what we're going to do now is create this really simple simulation using an attractor. So I'm going to turn off my work plane here just so we can see these two a little bit better. I'm going to go to More Graph, and we're going to get a cloner, and we're going to drag them into it. And then we're going to change the mode to, well, it's already on grid, so we're going to keep it on grid. Is it on grid by default? I'm not sure if it is, but it could be because I just created the example scene. Uh, if it's not, we're set it to grid. And then with the count, we're gonna make this five by five by five. So now we have a whole bunch of them. Now we're not really gonna mess with these parameters, but we are gonna change this to render instance. And then we're gonna come back up to MoGraph, Effector, hold Alt on your keyboard, and we're gonna drop it on random. And then you can maybe leave these as, as they are, and we're just going to go to the rotation, and we're just going to absolutely crank up these numbers and get our cinder blocks just at completely random rotations. But next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the cinder blocks, and I'm going to press T to get my scale, and I'm just going to scale them up a little bit. This is just going to help with the simulation, and it's going to help with the way they kind of interact and pile up. So I might come back and scale these up a little bit more, or scale them down depending on how they look once once we set this up. So next up, let's drop in a sphere, and we're going to leave this at 100, and I'm going to bring up the seg... No, in fact, I'll leave the segments. We'll leave that. We won't touch that. But what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on this and go to Bullet Tags and add a Collider Body. And then we're going to right-click on the Cloner, we're going to go to Bullet Tags, and we're going to add a Rigid Body. And then if we hit Play, all the blocks are just going to fall. And you see that they will interact with the sphere, but they're just falling. So what we're going to do is go to Simulate, Forces, and add an Attractor. Now, all we're going to do in the attractor is set it to force and set the strength to, let's have a look at 500. You can see that works, but it's not enough. So let's do a thousand and let's see how that looks. Might be too strong. A thousand works. So now what I'm going to do is go to this sphere and on this top dot here, I'm going to turn that red. And then let's go and grab a camera. Let's hit this white box to go into the camera. I'm going to change the focal length to 80 millimeters. And under coordinates, I'm going to zero out the X and then I'm going to press tab. I'm going to zero out the Y. I'm going to press tab two more times and I'm going to zero out the H and the P. And now we should be straight on looking at our simulation, our ball of blocks. So what I'm going to do is hit play and I'm just going to 
grab a frame that's kind of just as it's piling up and it looks quite nice it's going really quick though and it's actually difficult so let's bring this down to about 800 and hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier for us to grab a frame here okay now what i'm going to do is like i mentioned i'm going to scale these up a bit more now you'll see here they're dropping down a lot and they're not really having a lot of force so i'm gonna because i've scaled them up i'm gonna bring the power up to 5000 and now if we look they're gonna slam in really nice and they kind of have this x shape as they come in they're not dropping down and then swooping up they're just at their positions they're just slamming in so with that i'm just gonna grab some sort of frame like this but to make it easier what we can do is actually just cache this and bake it now you see that'll cache super quick now we can just scrub through and grab a frame that we like. So frame six here works. And now what I'm gonna do, the simulation is all set up and we'll just jump out here and turn off that camera and uh, just so you can see it playing back here. Like I said, I don't want this to look good in animation at all. So it's gonna look really janky. We're just here to pull a couple stills from it. So you can see this just a nice, simple attractor setup. Now let's add some lights to it and make it look really, really nice and Instagram worthy so it can be your daily render and you can get a whole bunch of likes. So let's just boot up Octane here or whatever render engine you're using and I'm gonna fire it up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lock the live viewer and I would suggest making this 1920 by 1080, but I'm gonna make this 2560 by 1440, so it's super sharp for you guys. And then I'm going to change it from direct lighting to path tracing in our kernel. I'm going to go to objects, texture environment, and I'm going to make the RGB spectrum black. And then I'm going to go to objects, texture environment, and I'm going to tweak this and I'm going to make like a nice kind of like off-white color. Something that's coming from these kind of warm tones. It's a little bit gray, something like this. And then you're going to see these materials look a little bit disgusting. I'm going to come back to frame six because that's what I wanted. And I'm going to turn off the sphere on the bottom dot now as well. Maybe frame seven. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to go to objects, light, area light. I'm going to right click on it, animation, animation tags, target. And then with this little dropper, I'm going to aim at the sphere. And then we're going to press F2 cameras, perspective, and then I'm going to do NA on the keyboard. I'm going to go to options, sorry, filter and work plane. And then I'm going to turn off the top dots on both the skies. So now we have this nice kind of darker gray viewport back. And now we can fly about and not be impacted by, uh, and, and our live viewer here won't be impacted by what we do here. So I'm going to put one light out to the side. I'm going to do a simple two point kind of lighting setup. Now, one thing you never want to do, never, never do this when you're lighting, always avoid lighting things like this, putting things right at the front. It's not flattering, something I rarely do. It can have its uses, but it's never going to look that nice. So let's light things from the side, maybe at most at an angle or from the back. This is a great tip to just make, make sure your renders have quite a bit of punch to them. So now what I'm going to do is duplicate that light and I'm going to put it at the back. Now, I just did something without saying what I was doing because I was caught up in saying what I was doing about something else. But I came into the light because I pushed it to the front and I went to visibility and camera visibility and I turned it off. So the reason I did that is just because when I push this light back here, you can see that you can see it now. So we're just going to make sure that's turned off. And then with this light, I'm just going to get it to kind of highlight some of these a little bit better. And recording the lights, that's about all I'm going to do. But... On these, I did something. I created these two environments, and with one of them, I only want to set them to the visible environment. I should have done this when I was setting it up before, but we just want this white one to be the visible environment. And the reason for that is because then we still get our nice, really, really dark shadows. But then what I am going to do is I'm going to start to creep this up in our shadow. So if we name this H um, shadow, and we name this HDRI, in this one, if this is our, our ability to control our shadows and where, wherever we put this is going to control the darkness of our shadows, I'm just going to bring this up so there's some light in there. <clears throat> and then with the lights, I think I'm relatively happy with that. This is a super simple setup. There's nothing special here. We can maybe come to the front a little bit. 
And then in the camera, I'm going to right click C4D Octane Tags, Octane Camera Tag, Camera Imager. I'm going to enable that. I'm going to bring up the highlight compression. And I'm going to add quite a bit of punch to this here. And I'm going to change the response to DSCS315 underscore 5. And that gives us a lot more punch as well. And I'm just going to tweak these parameters here to make the render look super punchy. And then in post processing, let's add a little bit of bloom. And I'm going to mess with the focal length now. Maybe let's do 135 millimeter. And this seems pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. We haven't looked at the materials though. So if it comes to the materials, you're going to see that our displacement isn't working. And that's going to hold back the materials quite a bit. So I'm just going to tidy these up. And you might think, why am I not using the auto arrange feature? And that's because if I uh, highlight all of these and hit auto arrange, it does nothing. So that's why I don't use that feature. Um, so let's just arrange all of these in a nice little line. Plus, even if it did work, I have my own workflow. I have a way that I like it to be done. I don't really want to, I don't really want to mess with that, you know. So once these are all neat, let's go to basic and just turn on our displacement and we can leave these settings, but I'm going to crank it up to 8K. I'll let that load. And then what I'm going to do is do everything I just did in the other materials. So I'll probably cut that out. So I'm just going to make this 8K and I'm going to go to basic and turn on the displacement. So now we've got that set up. One thing I want to do is just bring in a bit more color into the background. It's feeling a little bit too white. And I know I had a nice kind of color on it like this. And I just want to see what this second light is kind of providing right now because I feel like I'm not seeing it very much. So, let's crank up the power to a thousand. So we're getting a bit more power from the back. I'm going to leave this one at a hundred. And then if we select both of these and we set the sampling rate to 248 on both of them. And I'm actually going to bring this down to 500. It's way too powerful. And I'm going to bring this back a little bit as well. So now all I would say there's left to do is just create a couple different camera angles and see what's going on here. So what we could do is hold control, create another camera. And let's change our focal length to 300. And let's get like a, a cool close up or something. And then what we can do is basically just do this a couple of times. See what, what cool angles we can get. We could add one with some really cool focal length. So if we pick our focus here and select, for example, this block and then come to our Octane camera tag, go to Thin Lens, go to Thin Lens, Depth of Field, crank up the aperture, we can set this to 2, hitting Tab, then we'll set this to 3, and then 0 0.08, and we're going to see that we have a bunch of nice blur on this now, so maybe we're going to budge this over. <laughs> and then let's have a look at our or other frames. You see, I really like this. I think this looks awesome. Um, I'm not going to get into the kind of perfectionist tweaking here and messing with the scene forever, but maybe we want the background color a little bit brighter. But yeah, that's it. Super simple scene. Hopefully this is... I just want to plummet into you that feeling I had like 10 years ago when I followed this um, drop, the, the, this glowing balls tutorial of I remember it being the first time I created a render and it was it was like oh wow like I made that like you you render the image and you're looking at it and you're like holy shit I made that that is awesome and it, it's such a nice feeling and it really makes you feel like you can take it so much farther and it opens up this whole world of everything that's possible and what you can do so I figured that 
to have more tutorials like that on my channel that open the door to that and have the ability for you to sit there and in 15 minutes create a render that just looks good and then you kind of get that feeling of wow what else can i do i think that's really really uh, valuable so i hope you you got some from this and it is it is hard for me as such an advanced user of the software to to dial it back and create a tutorial on this so I, th I think often i speak myself out of it and think oh who's gonna get any use from that it's so simple everybody knows how to do it and the reality is people don't so uh, i i'm really really hoping that some people create some cool stuff with this i really want to see this with some cool like rocks icelandic type rocks stuff like that it's just gonna look so cool i might even make some myself after this um so that's that regarding render settings if you want to know what's best for this let's just do 248 and then holding well tapping tab we're just going to go 88 and then we're going to hit tab all the way down here to gi clamp and set that to 10 and then you're good to render and i would just render this out as a png and you're good to go now before i let you go we're done with our lighting let's just clean up the scene because the scene's a little bit messy so we're going to highlight all of this i'm going to do alt g and we're going to do i'm going to type in geo and then we're going to call this cam underscore o1 and then we're going to call this cam underscore o2 and we're going to call this one cam underscore o3 and then we can group all these together and alt g sorry we're going to group and then we can group these together just the cameras and then call these cams and then what we can do is call this light key and call this light fill and then we can group all of these together and call them lights now what we have is a nice put together scene it's nice and neat we've got our materials here and yeah super simple stuff Go and recreate this. Please tag me in them when you create them uh, on Instagram. That's uh, at Sketchy Visuals on Instagram. So create these renders and absolutely tag me in them because I want to see all of them. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing what you create. Um, thanks for sticking this one out. If you're a more advanced user and you came through this tutorial, I'd love to know what, what you took from it because I definitely think it's uh, useful for me to know uh, what even the, the more advanced people are benefiting from when it comes to these tutorials, whether it's my workflow or little things I'm doing. I think there's always things people are picking up on. But for long-term watchers at this point, you're probably really familiar with my workflow and different things that I'm engaging in. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Many more in the way. There's going to be some super complex ones coming up, super in-depth ones. Uh, so I really want to balance it out with, with simple tutorials like this, uh, making use of these mechanics. I did want to work on a couple of pyro tutorials, but I was having a bit of a hard time creating a render I actually liked with the new Cinema 4D Pyro. So I'm a bit unsure about that. I might dabble in a couple more X-Particles tutorials. I will say now as well, I have a Patreon on the way, which I'm just finishing up, which is going to be longer, in-depth tutorials, more tutorials that are just kind of overviewing my scenes and, and just really, really complex stuff where I don't have to worry about certain things and just kind of can be relaxed a bit more and, and just spend a couple hours in scenes that I've worked on or creating scenes more kind of less me recreating things for tutorials that I've created in the past and more me just creating things from the ground up so be on the lookout for that that will be in the description sooner or later if you're watching this <laughs> three months six months from now it'll already be there uh, but yeah uh, ha go wild creating this if this is your first time creating these definitely um, let, let, let me know how it goes and uh, I will see you next week for another tutorial so thanks for watching check out my assets and I'll see you in the next one